Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome to Conversations at Qahwa. I'm Asada Kothar. And I am Imam Kaba. And this week we are here to discuss how to live the Quran as Muslim youth. Yeah, you know, when you think about the youth, it's the future, right? And therefore, it's high priority uh, for us to be uh, setting up our youth for a bright future. Um, but we know in society today, there are many hurdles and many struggles that they have. What do you think are some of the struggles, daily struggles that they go through and, and how they represent in the Quran? You know, subhanAllah, when you're young and your relationship is just beginning with the Quran, it can be really hard to identify and see yourself in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's words, mm. right? But the stories that are represented in the Quran are the stories of our youth. Mm. They are there. It's hard because when you're young, you, you think, you know, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referenced so many times in the Quran, that these are just asatir al awalin Oh, these are just stories of people of old and they're not really relevant to me. Mm. You know, but people don't change. Mm. And young people and their struggles then and now are represented in the Quran. Mm. The stories of the youth in the Quran are the stories of today's youth. Mm. So the struggles to hold on to your faith, to form your identity. Mm. We see that in the stories of Ahl al-Kahf, of the youth of the cave. Mm. Um, the struggle with who is God? and how do I worship, and how do I know what truth really is, those were the questions of Ibrahim alayhi salam, mm. those existential questions that he thought, sought to answer. And how do I deal with temptation? Mm. How do I deal with the struggle of temptation? We see that in the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. And what happens when you know, parents have a message of truth for their children and they don't want to accept it? Mm. We've seen that in the stories you know, of, for instance, the son of, of Nuh alayhi mm. salam. And so young people are represented in the Qur'an. The stories of the Qur'an are their stories. You're absolutely right. And it's amazing, you know, when you look at Ibrahim alayhi salam, as you had mentioned, and there's a moment that Allah highlights in Surah Shu'ara where he, he stands up to his people and he, he makes this proclamation that, look, I'm not going with popular culture. Yeah. Right? I'm not doing that just because it's the way of my forefathers or it's the way of society. And he makes a stand and says, you know what, I'm going with Allah. Mm -hmm. But then he highlights to his people what his logic is, mm -hmm. why he's choosing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know, he says, khalaqani fahuwa yahdeen, that he's the one who created me and therefore the one who would guide me. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's a simple rule that, you know, it, it, it's a a rule that applies to all aspects of life that the creator would always knows best about his creation. Yes. He created me. Therefore, he would know what's best for me. He would know the best guidance that is for me. Therefore, I'm clinging on to him. Mm -hmm. But not only that. And he's the one that feeds me and gives me drink. The things that are vital to my existence as from a physical standpoint, right? right. It's coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's something here that in this day and age we, we sometimes struggle with. In a material world that we live in, sometimes we, we, we only focus on the asbab, like the things that we can see that brought us a particular favor or ni'mah. We see a food, we see a plate of food and we think Walmart, we think, right. you know, halal, yeah. we think this. But we forget the musabib, yes. right? going all the way back to the one that truly it originates from. So Ibrahim is, is highlighting this as one justification why he's deciding to connect himself to Allah as opposed to going with other than Allah. And then he goes on to say, وَإِذَا مَرِدُّ فَهُوَ يَشْفِينَ And when I'm sick, Allah is the one that heals me. Right? So he, he, he presents to his people the logical justification why it makes more sense to connect to Allah as opposed to following popular culture. And the order of those ayat in terms of tafsir is really beautiful because first Ibrahim alayhi salam talks about that, that he was the one that was create that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him. Mm -hmm. And then he mentioned wa huwa and mm -hmm. he is the one who guides me. And that comes before food and drink and it comes before illnesses when they're cured. Mm -hmm. Because the thing that sets human existence apart from any other creature is this relationship that we have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm. and what a 
priority the rizq, the, the rizq of guidance is mm. over any other type of rizq. Oh. And it's so precious and it's mentioned really in all of the stories of the youth in the Qur'an. Mm. See, the youth in the Qur'an taken as a whole, they are, they are socially set apart from the rest of their people. Mm. It's not that they lived among a people that were righteous or that were God-fearing or that were religious or rightly guided. No, most of the youth that, were, that are represented in the Qur'an had to struggle to hold on to that guidance, to mm. hold on to their identity, yeah. to hold on to their connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. And that was the story of the youth of the cave. Mm. The youth of the cave you know, were in this predicament where they were so, they were such social outcasts actually really for holding on to their belief and affirming their faith that they couldn't even live in their society anymore. They either were going to have to follow mm -hmm. popular culture yeah. and what everyone else was doing and worshiping and believing, or their lives were at risk. What the youth of the cave decided to do was find their solace in their camaraderie, find their guidance and their spiritual nurturing um, and their, their reinforcement and fortification, you know, really in their brotherhood with one another. Mm. And, you know, they were different from the rest of their people, just like Ibrahim السلام, was different from the rest of his people, mm. right? Th these were youth that were set apart. Mm. They didn't go with what everyone else in their society was doing. Um, and this really represents what the Prophet ﷺ said, that this religion will start out as something strange. It was strange in Mecca at that time to believe in Tawheed and the oneness of God, which is what Ibrahim ﷺ found, to live a life of righteousness to uphold social justice, mm -hmm. to hold on to your moral integrity, mm -hmm. to put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and God consciousness first, to prioritize mm -hmm. Allah's guidance mm -hmm. over your own, over the influence of your forefathers, mm -hmm. as well as the influence of popular culture. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was, and, 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 and the Rasulullah said mm -hmm. that it would, it would be something that's strange in the future. Mm -hmm. And here we are. SubhanAllah, you know, it's, it's very important for us to understand that, you know, we're going to have moments in life where we're going to feel like a stranger because we've decided to follow the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, but in addition to that, it's also important to recognize that we're human beings. And Allah recognizes that. And, you know, in Surah Kahf, in the uh, Surah you just mentioned, when he said further in the Surah, وَاصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِي يُرِيدُنْ وَجَهَ Keep yourself patient with company yes. that is seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right, night and day. In other words, having good company is very important in, in strengthening us as strangers. Uh, you know, as, from a human perspective, we desire company, we desire companionship, yeah. we desire so, to, to socialize, uh, you know, unless you're an introvert, but still, right. you know, <laughs> we, we, we desire company and, right. and that affection. So uh, it's a very important, company is so important. And when the Rasul Sallallahu spoke about the parable of bad company being like being with a blacksmith, right. right? Where, you know, at the very least, you will leave that bad company with stains or a bad smell. You know, and I was reflecting on what is the bad smell practically? Right. You know, you may be with company because you hear this sometimes. Sometimes or you'd say, you know, I'm with my friends, they smoke weed, they do this, but I don't do it. I'm just right. hanging out with them, right? But the problem is the bad smell you leave with a lot of times is doubts, mm -hmm. right? Just being in that company will start to put doubts in your mind that, you know, maybe it's not that bad. Yeah. You know, maybe I'm too strict. Maybe my dean is a little bit too harsh. Or it's like, I'm, I don't have free, like all of these thoughts. Mm -hmm. And sometimes these seeds can grow and shaitan will try to make them grow yes. into you end up actually falling into it, right? And, and compromising your values. So it's very important that company is, is something very sensitive and we need to be mindful that we choose the people that are best for us. And sometimes I hear the youth saying, you know, yeah, they do bad things, but they got my back. They love me. Yeah. We should always recognize that true love is loving someone to have the best dunya and akhirah. Yes. Right? If someone truly loves you, they want you to have a beautiful akhirah, yes. a beautiful hereafter. And that's true love. And that's what the Rasul wanted for us. And he's the best of company.
And Allah also says, لا يغرنك تقلب الذين كفروا في البلاد. He says, don't be deceived by the enjoyment that you outwardly see of those who've rejected faith on the earth, in the land. And it's very important for our youth to recognize that you may see people who've gone away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it looks like they're having a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Right, it looks like they're having a blast. Yeah. Instagram, all of this. But recognize when Allah says, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً بَنْكَ Whoever turns mm -hmm. away from the remembrance of Allah, they are promised a difficult, straightened life. And that life is the life of the internal, right. right? Outwardly, sure, it looks like it's all good. Inwardly, it's not all good. And that's the reality because that's how Allah created human being. We need Allah yeah. to achieve internal peace. And it's something that is we have to recognize because on the outward, it may deceive us and we may be tempted to go in that direction. But we should always recognize if we do go in that direction, it will leave us empty because we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.